One would think I would be afraid of fire for my appearance. The asymmetric scars I wear on my face and limbs. Stand back, they would say. Be careful. Don't get too close. You're going to burn yourself. Nope. I'm actually drawn to it in a strange way. I enjoy the warmth of the fire. Sometimes I just stare into the flames and watch the wood burn, reflecting on my past and thinking about my journey, the road less traveled. I couldn't control what my father did to me, to us. Arson was his crime, with the intent of purposely trying to hurt us. I was only four years old when my father made this trap and struck that match, hoping we would die. But God had other plans. The fire scarred me bad, scorching my arms, hands, and feet. It changed my face and left me disfigured, but I survived. I became stronger over time, mentally and physically. I learned to harness my emotions and became so driven and focused I decided to change the narrative from victim to victor. And as a result, I ignited my own flame. It burns within now. Maybe that's it. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Maybe it's about control, I guess. us look to athletes and entertainers um, as heroes, but my mother has always been that um, central figure, uh, my hero in my life, just because of all the things she's been through in life. Um, she has that Southern hospitality, but she has that Philadelphia um, street mentality in her. Um, I mean, she can be as, as strong as a lion, um, but as gentle. Um, as, as uh, a woman as you've seen. My mother was born uh, in the South, um, in a town called uh, Rich Spring in South Carolina. Um, and she was uh, raised there for just a couple years before they moved to uh, Philadelphia, um, Pennsylvania. Um, she, had, uh, she had great parents. Of course, they, uh, they had to deal with the, uh, the times of uh, you know, the 50s and 60s. Um, money was, was tight. Uh, jobs, uh, job opportunity was limited. And so that caused a little strain. Um, but uh, by all sense, I mean, she had a, a normal um, childhood. My mother and father had their domestic issues. Um, they were extreme at times. Um, at times there were um, verbal, physical abuse. Uh, sometimes it would involve um, a knife, um, and lots of violence. Um, and of course, my mother, she, she was a, a, tough, a tough lady. So, uh, of course, she didn't back down to, to anything, which made it kind of tough. Uh, but she, she also loved him, so uh, it, it probably was times where she, she wished she had left him uh, for good, but she didn't, um, so the cycle just continued. LSD, marijuana, you name it, it was a history with him. His behavior, his tone, his anger changed, he hollered at you and whatever else he could do to disturb you, that's what he did. And I thought that in time, he would change. He had a family. The alcohol and drugs was making him do these things. Arguments, um, violence, um, frequent visits by, uh, by the police, um, breakups, um, getting back together. Um, when she was in her mid-20s, that's when tragedy struck. The fire uh, that happened in South Carolina, 
that uh, ultimately uh, killed her mother. Um, it left her husband uh, with a, a life sentence in prison. Her kids were scattered uh, throughout the community, uh, living in different homes. And, and me, uh, spending about five, six months um, in the hospital. my fifth birthday. It happened in May of 1974. We lived uh, on the outskirts of, of town um, in Rich Spring. Uh, we had rented a, a, a town, um, a, a country house out there uh, on the outskirts. And my mom uh, had finally had enough and she decided to leave my father um, for this last time. So she, uh, she, she gathered up the family and we made the two mile drive back to my great grandfather's house. And so there, there we were, um, me, my, my brother Kim, my sister and my grandmother, um, all um, um, at my grandfather's house. Uh, when the phone rang, uh, my father was on the other end and I could see in my mother's eyes that something uh, wasn't right. Um, I could hear her tone. I was so young, but I mean, you can look at your your parents' eyes and, and, and see all kind of emotions. And, and of course, I can hear um, that things were not right. We ended up loading back up in the car, um, me and my siblings, uh, my grandmother, and my mom, and we headed back through town um, to our house um, where my father was. Um, we edged towards the uh, out of boundaries of town across the railroad tracks, and then we made that quarter of a mile down the uh, down the dirt road to the house. And that's where my father uh, sat on that porch um, with that glass in his hand, um, probably with uh, some type of alcohol in there, just waiting on us. And I can tell by um, the mood, um, the emotions at the time, that something wasn't right. And so I uh, was telling them to, to just be cautious about going in here because we don't know what what's going on. But nevertheless, we unloaded the, the car and we edged uh, towards the porch and my mother, uh, she just began to uh, pepper him with questions. Um, she had my baby sister who was not even one year old in the hand. And we just kind of filed behind her. Uh, we got up on the porch and we entered the house. And uh, my mom put my baby sister in the crib to the right. And that's when we began to see the, uh, the broken glass. And she just began to uh, become erratic at that time, just asking why, why, um, why did you do this, um, what's going on, what's wrong with you. I can see the overturned furniture, um, the broken china as I kind of marched behind her uh, with, with um, questions of my own. My grandmother, you know, she began to you know, say he was crazy, I told you to leave him a long time ago. Um, my mom began to cry as I continued to file behind her. As we approached the kitchen, um, my mom said that she smelled, uh, smelled gas and told my grandma that we needed to uh, turn the valves off. Scott was, was, was not there in the beginning where you could see him, but he, was, he came in there. And I asked him, what, what have you done? You know, but what, what, why is the gas seeping in, in this house like that? What have we done? What are you doing? Um, as we all piled in the kitchen, um, that's when um, tragedy struck. My father approached the uh, back screen portion of the kitchen and he struck that match. First the boom, 
then the fire, the house just went up in flames. Next thing I remember is uh, being outside the house. Um, now I know that my mother broke the window and pushed me out the house. And now I was at the, uh, the front of the home at the edge of the field. And my brother's um, out ahead of me and he's running and I'm asking him to, to wait on me. Um, and he stops and looks at me. Obviously he can see um, how badly burned I was. And something that, um, that stays with me to this day is, is what he said. Um, he told me to stay back and take care of my mom and, and the rest of the family while he runs to town to get help. Um, I thought that was, uh, and I still think that's, that was the most courageous thing that I, I've ever heard um, from, a, from a guy. Somehow, our entire family was able to escape that house to my, my father's shock, uh, with the exception of my little sister who was still inside. Um, but somehow my, my mother um, was able to convince my father um, to go back. She made one last request for him to go back in there and, and, and get my baby sister. And i um, not sure what happened, um, but um, maybe God intervened and just calmed the spirit for just a moment. He went back inside and, and grabbed her and he came back out uh, with my sister. Uh, and she was unscarred. Um, he was unscarred as well, but uh, more importantly, my, my baby sister came out uh, alive and, and uh, unscathed. We loaded up into the Buick, made the drive back to town. My mother and grandmother uh, began to knock on doors until we finally uh, found a, a home and a family that helped us. Um, they drove us back to my great-grandfather's house. Um, and the next scene that I remember, which um, my mother has confirmed, that um, the helicopter came to, to pick us up and eventually flew us to uh, Charleston Burn Center.